friend for a reason. They will sacrifice themselves if it means saving the ones they love. Here are three horrifying stories that would have turned out tragic had a dog not been around. Number 3. I had to watch after my sister when my parents were out one night. I wouldn't be out anyway though, I was busy playing the current hit game that had just come out at the time. My dog Sheriff was laying next to me when he lifted his head up and his ears twitched. You know, that thing that dogs do when they hear something. I paused the game to see if I could hear what he was listening for. I didn't hear anything and lost interest assuming it was someone walking their dog outside or something. Sheriff jumped off the bed and ran out the half-open door to the bedroom. He was barking, going crazy at something. I didn't care to follow him, I simply yelled at him to shut up. But eventually, his normal annoying barking suddenly turned crazed and defensive, as if he were confronting something, or someone. That's when I got suspicious and ran to go see what it was. I heard a sheriff's nail scrape the basement steps as he flew down the stairs. My heart sank as I realized he must have been chasing something. I found myself standing at the top of the basement steps for a whole minute, staring into the darkness below, gathering up the courage to go down there. I finally did, turning the light on on the way down. Sheriff was standing by the door to the laundry room. I didn't even dream of opening that door. I trusted in him enough to believe that someone was in there. I struggled, but eventually picked him up and ran with him all the way back upstairs. As I was about to shut the light, I heard the sound of the laundry room door creaking open. At that instant, I slammed the basement door shut and locked it. I listened for a few moments with my ear against the door, and I could hear, barely over the sound of Sheriff barking, the sound of the steps squeaking. I dove for the phone and called the police. When they arrived, they caught him trying to bust out through the basement window. Me and my sister watched as the officers walked him out to the car, and I'll never forget the dreadful stare the man gave me as he was forced into the back seat of the police car. But I'll also never forget how grateful I was to have Sheriff with me that night. Number 2. I used to have a beagle pointer mix before she passed away at the age of 11. Her name was Mandy, and she was the sweetest and most loyal dog a person could ask for. She would never harm a fly but she did have a big troublemaking mouth. So the story goes, I was 15 years old, getting ready for sleep one night like any other night. Mandy slept in my room, and when I walked into my room, finally ready to crash in bed, I was greeted to Mandy growling. She wasn't looking at anything in particular. I playfully asked her what was wrong, and she just made an annoyed doggy sound before putting her head down. I found it funny, for the good hour of me rolling around trying to fall asleep, Mandy would constantly break the silence with growling. I would peek at her, but she would still have her head down. She showed no reaction to me offering to take her out, so I could check that off the list. It quickly went from cute and funny to just annoying, but I eventually fell asleep. I woke up to see that it was 2am and Mandy was growling. I tried to adjust my eyes in the dark and I could eventually see Mandy standing in the middle of the room. She was looking up at my closet door. I felt my heart begin to race. What I was witnessing was flat out disturbing. I turned on the lamp and watched as Mandy continued to stare up at the elevated closet. I don't know what I was thinking, but I decided to open up the closet and check what she was barking at. I want to note right now I have one of those closets that lead to an attic. When I checked, there was nothing in the closet but I noticed the attic door was cracked open. You can imagine the fear in my body as I ran to my parents' room to get my dad. He didn't seem to take me too seriously until he got to my room and saw Mandy growling and looking up in my closet. My dad is a big guy, so he went in there without a weapon. I sat there, worried for what was to come next. What came next was my dad screaming at the top of his lungs at somebody. I heard boxes fall over and glass shatter as my dad moaned in apparent pain. Somebody was rushing out of the closet. I hoped it was my dad, but instead, some six foot five man with a hammer in his hand jumped out from the closet and passed me. What happened next still surprises everyone. Mandy jumped up and grabbed a hold of the man's arm with her teeth. The scream of the unfamiliar voice filled the room. 
My dad came rushing out of the closet just in time to jump onto the intruder, taking him down. He sent my mom to fetch my little brother's prop handcuffs. My dad held him down while I handcuffed him. Thankfully, he was sent to jail. I don't know what his intentions were, but obviously if he had a hammer with him, he probably wasn't just planning on robbing us. If we didn't have Mandy at that time, I could only imagine what would have happened to our family. Number 1. I was only 11 years old, and my brother was only 8. We were walking our dog Buster around the block in the dark. Buster was a husky German Shepherd mix. Upon turning the corner to the other side of the block, we ran into a tall man who greeted us with a smile. He stopped in his tracks and seemed to expect us to as well. It seemed he was trying to start a conversation, but we just kept walking past. My brother kept looking back, telling me that the man was following us. He was right. Each time I turned around, the man was the same distance from us, but he would stop looking whenever we looked. I motioned to my brother to walk faster. The faster we started to walk, it seemed the closer he got to us. We were approaching our house, but my heart stopped when I heard the muffled scream of my brother as he was grabbed and pulled away. Buster started barking like a rabid dog, and I shit you not, pulled the leash out of my hands and sunk his teeth into the man's leg. I could see the blood dripping down his leg as his screams caught the attention of the people inside their houses. Our neighbor came outside and we explained everything while pointing at the man. The man began hopping away. I had to put the leash back on Buster to keep him from chasing him. My neighbor called the cops. She was a tiny little woman. She couldn't do anything to that guy even if she tried. She then walked to our door and told our parents what happened. Police came to question us and the neighbor. They caught the man limping down a sidewalk a few blocks over shortly after. One of the cops told us our dog was a hero, but we already knew that. <laughs>